Hello guys, welcome back to another Jonah Central video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create procedural movement using drivers in Blender. Let's get started. So press N to open up this transform uh, edit box. So if I change the location here, changes location, rotation, scale, you know the drill. So if I right click Z on rotation and click add driver and delete that little thing, just click the X there. So uh, if you do type in frame, every frame, the driver value is going to increase for this cube. And as you can see, it is now spinning. So I'll create a keyframe here and a keyframe here. So if I uh, open this up and I switch to the graph editor, uh, if, if you're in high school math, this should make more sense to you. But uh, basically, all movement transformations, translations, everything in Blender, uh, all the movement can be adjusted using a graph. This graph has a negative and positive because as you can see up here, the location is in the negatives. So if I move this more this way, you can see my Y continues going negative, but if I put it on the other side, it starts becoming positive. And that's how Blender uh, kind of does its directions. It's got the middle point right here which is the smack center of the project. And then from that point on, it either uh, goes negative or positive, kind of like a 3D graph. So the reason I uh, brought up this graph editor is because um, this is basically what animates your movement. So uh, for the, this green line, for example, as you can see, it starts at zero, as so does my cube. And as it goes along this green line, you can see my cube moving along until it reaches right here, which is exactly negative 9.0334. All movement can be adjusted on this graph. So if I were to create a bend down here, if I press, press play now, as you can see it goes and then it bounces back because that's how I, that I adjusted that movement on the graph. So how this connects to like high school math is you, you use graphing calculators, or at least that's what we're doing, and uh, what we do is we have expressions, and these expressions uh, create these our, these own graphs. So for example, uh, I'll put a picture up of a linear graph. Uh, this is used by just putting x. This is just what x looks like. Uh, this is what x squared looks like. And this is what sine x looks like. Okay, so... If I, so now we can actually put these expressions procedurally into this graph right here and create quote unquote procedural movement. So instead of needing to add keyframes, key adjust these handles, we can literally use math and expressions to automatically create movement. So I'm gonna just uh, clear all these keyframes, reset the position. So uh, let's, so to start off, let's start off with the basics. Uh, if you right click this Z location or whatever, uh, uh, whatever transformation, it doesn't really matter. Uh, delete this variable. We don't need to do that. So in replacement of X that we'd normally use in an expression, uh, mathematically, we're going to use frame instead. So if I just do frame divided by 10, because just frame is really fast, as you can see, this uh, is linearly moving upwards. So that uh, linear graph that I just showed you, uh, if you divide that by 10, it makes it less steep. Uh, but in turn, it makes this object move up slower. So I'll right click the Z location again, add driver. And this time I'm gonna do bracket frame divided by 10 because that's a good time frame. Uh, and then to do an exponent in Blender, it is this symbol twice. I don't know what this is. It kind of, I just call it like the star symbol. But you do it twice for exponent. And then of course, if you do squared, uh, this will make its location exponentially increase. So instead of going up one, two, three, four, five, six, up, up this graph, it goes one, two, four, eight, and it exponentially increases and in turn, I forgot to delete that. In turn, oops. In turn, essentially, becomes it goes faster and faster and faster. And as you can see, 
it's going to go higher and higher and higher and higher and faster and faster and faster until basically it's going up at the speed of light. So if I delete this driver, one more cool thing that you can do to procedurally manipulate these drivers, I'm going to use Z one more time. Uh, this one's probably the most useful, one of the most useful. So if you go sim uh, bracket frame divided by 10, uh, you can now actually get it to go up and then down and up and down because uh, on the graph if you do sin x instead of going up and up and up forever or down and down and down forever as you can see it creates a wave which I thought was really cool so uh, I think to change the intensity of this you can multiply it by digits and as you can see it's not going fast or it's now going higher so if I switch that 2 to a 5 as you can see it's now going really high and the frame that you divide by if you decrease that it's probably going to go faster yeah but those are three uh, cool drivers and expressions you can use to procedurally create movement I found this mm -hmm. to be really cool especially because I'm in high school and I'm doing math and stuff but this is a really cool way to uh, uh, procedurally do movement so instead of needing to do keyframes and keyframes if you want something to passively happen without needing to hand animate it this is the perfect way to do it anyways thank you so much for watching I really hope this was helpful uh, I'm sorry if the exp explanation wasn't great uh, I'm trying to explain math here I'm not that good at that but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later